Good evening, ladies. Talana is taking a piss missile to the downside, and I want to explain why I think this is a golden opportunity for the next two years. So firstly, we should probably discuss why is Solana actually going down in the short term, in this particular moment in time. It's in a bit of a downtrend, there's no denying that. And when something is in a trend, it's more likely that the trend continues than a trend reverses. But I don't think the reasons it's going down are anything to be concerned about. Firstly, obviously, Bitcoin and Ethereum are in a bit of a downtrend. Obviously, altcoins are going to see more of a capitulation than the majors than bitcoin and ethereum and i don't know where bitcoin's going to bottom it had a really nice run from 15 to 30k and now it's taking a bit of a breather who knows if it makes a new low who knows if it turns around at the low 20s or who knows if that was the bottom already it doesn't fucking matter because when i was buying bitcoin in the last bear market for six grand a coin on average averaged out i don't really care if it briefly went down to 3k or if i was buying ethereum on average around 300 dollars. i remember putting in a lot of buys every single day i was just putting 10 euro 10 euro 10 euro 10 euro just like that not a huge amount of money but when it, ethereum then went to five grand or bitcoin went to 70 grand did you really care that like oh i didn't get ethereum at 200 dollars? i didn't put all my money in ethereum at the very low of 150 dollars or I didn't put all my money at Bitcoin's low at $3,000. No, I'm still very happy that I got an average price at a very low average price. So think about what you'll be thinking in two years time. Like it's more of a risk that you'd be left on the sidelines that you didn't nail the absolute bottom of Solana. Now, one of the main reasons I think most people realize why Solana is going down so much is this huge overhang of coins from the FTX so as you can see from this chart, FTX have a huge bag of Solana that they have to liquidate over some period of time. And yeah, $700 million worth of Solana is set to be liquidated. And this is kind of like a sell the news event, except in reverse. So if you know what a sell the news event is, generally if something bullish is happening, like a Bitcoin ETF approval or something like that, or a Bitcoin ETF actually being out there in the world, what you want to do is buy the rumor so the rumor, oh, there's a Bitcoin ETF coming. Bitcoin's going to shoot up in price, the rumor of that. And then when it actually happens, like, okay, Bitcoin ETF, everyone's already put their chips on the table. What's the further upside? Not much. So then there's no more buyers, so the price comes back down. So that's how a buy the rumor, sell the news event usually goes for something, for a bullish catalyst. Now we're looking at a bearish catalyst. <laughs> so you do the exact opposite. You'd sell the rumor and buy the news. So the rumor was that Solana had to liquid, or sorry, FTX had to liquidate this huge bag of Solana. And now it has been confirmed that they have all this Solana to be liquidated. So potentially this is a buy the news event. Let's dig in a bit deeper why I think this is not like anywhere near a 100% terrible situation for Solana whatsoever. So from this chart, it looks pretty bad. So we have $700 million of Solana needing to get liquidated and we can see these like uh, i don't know what kind of color that would you call that beige color the beige color bars represent the weekly volume in comparisons to the amount of coin that has to be liquidated so for example so solana has a weekly volume that's 80 percent of the amount of coin that has to be liquidated the amount of solana coin that has to be liquidated so it's gonna like if FTX dumped that all in one go, that would be a huge negative catalyst for the price of Solana, obviously, because it's a huge amount of the total weekly volume, whereas the other coins aren't as bad. Aptos is much worse than Solana, but <laughs> like you can see, Bitcoin and Ethereum have such high weekly volumes that these small amounts, like $35 million for Bitcoin is just nothing. Anyone can eat that up. Bitcoin can eat that up for breakfast. So people have been front running this news and let's dig into it a bit deeper why it's not as bad as it seems. So firstly, liquidators, so the people who are liquidating FDX to return the like assets to the creditors, so the people who lost all their money on FDX, they're gonna get something back. They're gonna work out how much of a pie there is left. They're going to divide it up between all the creditors equally like proportionally equally and then send it out so these liquidators have to their job is to try and get the most amount of money for the creditors like their job is not to go in and get anything that they can their job is to try and get the most amount of money that they can for the assets that are remaining 
So they're not going to just go in and dump all the Solana in one go. So this from Masari, this chart was from Masari. And Masari estimate that there will be a monthly release of $9.2 million of Solana per month. $9.2 million. Meaning that they're not going to sell the Solana. Meaning that it will take them years to sell the Solana. They're going to sell the Solana over the course of years. The other reason that they have to do it this way is because a lot of the Solana is actually vested Solana. It's not Solana that is 100% liquid. It's vested, meaning they don't even have access to the Solana to sell yet. They just had allocations to Solana and they weren't allowed to sell it until a certain number of years. So that's why they're only allowed to, or they're only estimating that they're going to sell under $10 million per month. So when you look at that in comparisons to the weekly volume, you can start to get a picture of how much of a non-event this actually probably is. Like $10 million per month over the next few years. So I've just looked it up. The staking rewards annually for Solana are 500 million per year. So $10 million per month, that would be like $120 million per year. So it's one fifth the size of the staking rewards for Solana, this FTX dumpage. So it's not completely insignificant, but it's not going to make an enormous, enormous price crash. The other thing the liquidators are going to do, most likely, they're probably not going to be dumping the Solana directly on the markets. Like the markets can only absorb so much Solana without dumping the price, making the liquidators get less money for the Solana that they own. So what they're most likely going to do is sell the Solana OTC over the counter, meaning that they're not going to sell it on directly on exchanges. They're going to find a, a buyer on the outside, some maybe a crypto fund or someone like that who's willing to buy the Solana at a price a little bit below the current market price, who want to buy it for the long term. So that means there will be much less selling pressure on the open markets. However, it also on the other side means that there's going to be less buying pressure because that buyer probably isn't going to go ahead and buy the same amount on the exchange if they've already got a load over the counter. But personally, I think this FUD is completely overblown. Four sellers are a gift. If you're a buyer on an asset, if you're bullish on an asset and you have a four seller, that is a gift. You need to look at that as a gift. Imagine FDX had never blown up. What price would Solana be right now? It would probably be like 30 or $40. So it's an absolute gift that FDX are giving giving us to get Solana at these prices. And if Solana goes even lower to $10, that is a gift in my opinion. Like I don't think any there's any legitimate sellers of Solana. Like who's going to be selling Solana here? Like, okay, cool, Solana's up like the 100% from the lows from 10 to $20. But who the hell bought Solana at $10 to sell it at 20, unless you're like some sort of leveraged trader. The only people who are selling Solana now are forced sellers and short sellers. So short sellers are trying to bet that the price is going to continue going down, which it might, I don't know, in the short term, but it's because they're short term bearish on the price of the asset. But if you look anywhere on CT, crypto Twitter, everyone is saying, okay, I'm a buyer of Solana at $15. Oh, I'm a buyer of Solana at 17 Oh, I'm a buyer at Solana, $10, $12. Some people are even saying, I'm a buyer of Solana. I'm going to back up the truck at $4. So I just hear a lot of people like, oh, I'm waiting for this price to buy. I'm waiting for this price to buy. And that's just kind of a signal to me that it's probably not going to get to those prices. I just don't think there's any legitimate sellers of Solana at those uh, under $20. It just doesn't really make a huge amount of sense in my eyes when a lot of people agree that it's going to be hundred dollars in the absolute minimum in a couple of years time so this forced liquidation has already been front run like i said it's a buy the news event <laughs> and i think it's also a bullish thing like just to get rid of this fdx overhang like that's just going to be a huge weight of people's shoulders there's going to be no no more ties to fdx and yeah we know that's been like the major thing that's brought solana to such a low price and one of the only food pieces you can really talk about Solana left like there's nothing really there's not much more to be bashing on Solana at these low prices <laughs> apart from this FTX overhang and when you look at the fundamentals of Solana it's just been non-stop bullish fundamental updates like we saw the integration with Shopify with Solana 
and Visa with Solana. And Visa now just released this new report talking about Solana. <laughs> like, let me just uh, take a couple of snippets from their new research report that Visa wrote about Solana. Solana's architecture allows for multiple transactions to be processed simultaneously. This design helps prevent congestion in one part of the network from affecting overall network performance. So this is like, you know, pretty deep in the weed stuff. It's not just like, oh, Solana has fast transactions and is low cost. They're actually like, know quite a lot about the architecture of Solana. They've really done a deep dive into it. And they realize like, with Ethereum, there's only one channel for transactions to go through. And if a lot of people are minting an NFT, that means anyone who's sending Ethereum from one address to the other is also going to have gas fees spike through the roof. But that doesn't necessarily happen on Solana. It's just the people minting that NFT are going to have a small gas spike, not the entire network, because there's multiple channels they can go through with Solana. And they're also saying that Solana's tra transaction fees are not only affordable, but they're predictable, which is a really important point as well. So it's pretty bullish that fees are, are so bullish on Solana. So they're showing here how predictable the fees for Solana are in comparison to Bitcoin and Ethereum, where the fees are pretty much all over the place. It just completely depend depends on network demand. Another point that I saw is that Solana's social dominance is at an all time high. People are getting very bullish on Solana. It's really taking up a huge mind share in crypto, in the cryptoverse. And the fact that everyone is saying, oh, I'm going to buy Solana at this price. Solana's gonna to go to this price and then I'm going to back up the truck. Everyone's convinced that it's going to go lower and everyone wants to buy in lower. And that was kind of the same outcome that people were like, when Bitcoin hit 20K, everyone, or Bitcoin got to 15K, everyone's like, oh, I'm backing up the truck at 10K. I'm backing up the truck at 10K, you know, and that obviously 10K never happened. Now, I'm not saying Solana has 100% bottomed, but yeah, all I'm saying is that I'm buying with every spare cent over the next few months. Well, if Solana is under $20, you know, I'm putting every spare cent that I possibly can into it. I don't care what price, how low it gets. I'm still backing up the truck. The bullish fundamentals for Solana have never been higher. So eventually fundamentals catch up or eventually price catches up with fundamentals thank you so so much for watching i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned someone something and see you in the next one cheers